Welcome traders to another Ticknell Weekly Market Outlook for week commencing the 7th of February with me Patrick Munley. Seems that central bankers around the globe are all curiously coalescing around March as a potential date for rate hikes. Uh, there were plenty ahead of, um, ahead of the main ones as many emerging market central banks and some uh, developed market central banks like the RBNZ and the Norsbank have already raised rates. The Fed's pivot that began really at the December FOMC and gathered steam as Chair Powell's confirmation testimony last month was perhaps the driving force that cleared the way for the others as the Fed has strongly guided its intention to hike in March. The BOE has hiked twice since the Fed's December FOMC and ECB's Lagarde is certainly making a pivot now that uh, she probably uh, could be brought into forward guidance and subsequent um, rate hikes plans at its March meeting. And, uh, and the Bank of Canada, uh, who passed in January, but will rush into the Fed's waiting arms in March, it's perceived. And the RBA will probably again codify reference to willingness to follow them all again after stating that the other central bank's actions would influence its now done deal to end bond purchases programs. The ripple effects of the Fed moves will continue to reverberate through markets for the coming week. So turning to the data for this week, starting with the, uh, the US. Um, Tuesday, December consumer credit, robust demand for credit as pandemic savings are worked down continues. We also get January NFIB small business optimism. Uh, looking for a print there of 97.4, confidence hampered by the Omicron disruptions probably. Uh, we also get December trade balance, uh, looking for negative 83 billion US dollars. The deficit to remain wide on demand and inventory rebuild. Then on Wednesday, we get December wholesale inventories, looking for a 2% print there. Uh, final estimate supply chain issues should be worked through is the consensus view. And then on Thursday, the all important January CPI, looking for a 0.5% print, uh, price pressures to hold annual inflation near 40 year highs. We also get initial jobless claims uh, to remain at very low levels. And we get some Fed speak out of Bowman and Nesta. And then we round up the week on Friday in the US with uh, February University of Michigan sentiment, looking for a 67.5 print. Uh, inflation and Omicron concerns again, uh, probably dented confidence. So from a technical perspective, the dollar index is uh, is reaching some pretty pivotal levels here. I'm watching uh, the test now of the uh, 94.80 ascending trend line support, uh, pitchfork support using the swing structure here. If we get bullish reversal patterns there, I'd be looking to engage on the long side, looking for this final leg to complete into the 98, uh, 98, 20 area uh, into that um, March FOMC uh, rate hike. So that would be a buy the rumor, sell, sell the fact type setup there. But if we take out the trend line on the closing basis, then I'm going to be looking for a quick test of the yearly pivot and projected descending trend line support coming in. 93.80. We have an equality objective at 93.58. The equality is this swing here, overlaid from our current swing highs. And then if we find, uh, if we get a bounce from there, watching for the retest of the uh, trend line from below. And uh, if sellers step in there, it could be that we've seen a meaningful top in the dollar. And then we'd be looking for a move down into the 92.30. So really going to be key to see how the dollar responds at this ascending trend line support. Heading over to the Eurozone, in terms of data, uh, Monday, we get February Centix Investor Confidence looking for a 15.4 print versus the last 14.9. Sentiment remains upbeat in the Eurozone despite the Omicron disruptions. And then in terms of further data, we get uh, Germany, December trade balance, on Wednesday, a positive outlook for 2022 as the global recovery continues. And then that uh, we round out the data in terms of Eurozone 
uh, with German CPI on Friday. Final estimate, energy inflation remains a key driver for that, that print. So in terms of the euro dollar, obviously with uh, Lagarde making her pivot this week, we saw a decent pop. We've taken out that trend line again on a closing basis. I'm looking for any three wave corrective moves back into the 113 area to uh, to see if we can get buyers stepping in, watching for bullish reversal patterns to engage on the long side, looking for a test of the yearly pivot up to 116.36 and the Symmetry swing resistance coming in at 116.65. That's versus this last meaningful leg to the upside that we saw uh, overlaid versus our current swing lows. So just watching to see how we respond at these uh, these prior highs here, this 114.89, 114.90, 115. And uh, if we get a three-way corrective move, we'll look to engage on the long side. In terms of Japan, a very light week in terms of the calendar uh, for the week ahead. We get on Tuesday, December household spending expected to be flat, pent up demand to support spending, but weak re uh, real wages are the real risk there. We also get the December current account balance, looking for an 89 print. <clears throat> weak external demand is set to narrow the surplus over in Japan. And from a technical perspective, the dollar yen is trading at resistance here, this 115.52 area. As, uh, as that is continued to be defended by the bears, we look for a move back through the trend line support at 114 to test the major trend line support, which now comes in at the, uh, just below the 113 handle. Watch for bullish reversal patterns there to engage on the long side. And we have a, an equality objective versus this big swing structure here to 117.80. At this stage, <clears throat> it would take a loss of the trend line support on a closing basis to reassess the bullish view in terms of the dollar yen. Over to sterling and the UK. In terms of data, what do we have coming up? It's a pretty light calendar week for, uh, for the UK, to be honest. A lot of focus, obviously, on the political situation um, in the UK with respect to Prime Minister Boris Johnson's uh, difficult position that he's finding himself in with cabinet members resigning, etc. Um, what we're looking for now, I should, sorry, I should, not cabinet members, uh, members of his, his uh, team in Down Street resigning. We haven't had any cabinet ministers resign yet. Um, in terms of data, it's really going to be focused on Friday where we get the fourth quarter GDP, 1.1% print last out. Uh, growth should remain robust, uh, but Omicron obviously the downside risk. We also get December trade balance in the UK looking for a, a print above 626 billion COVID-19 and Brexit continue to create trade instability in the UK. So from a technical perspective, sterling is, uh, is somewhat betwixt and between here. Um, we have taken out the descending trend line resistance, so which is a bullish signal. Um, what I'm looking for now is how we correct against Friday's key reversal. If we can hold the trend line support coming in 134.30s, we watch for bullish reversal patterns there to engage on the long side, targeting a 138.50 test. Uh, if we fail the trend line and we get a close below it on a daily basis, then we will be looking to engage on the short side, targeting that quality objective down to 130 versus this swing structure here. Last but not least, we take a look at uh, Australian data. On Monday, we get fourth quarter retail sales, looking for an 8.1% print there. Reopening boom and nominal sales already reported at 8.7% last quarter. And then on Tuesday, we get January NAB business survey. Conditions are improving in the second half of January after the Omicron hit, so we're looking for positive print there. Uh, we also get on Wednesday, uh, Feb, Westpac, MAI, consumer sentiment, better virus news, but shifting view on interest rates are likely to impact that consumer sentiment in Australia. And we round out the week in Australia on Thursday with February MI inflation expectations last out 4.4%, peaked at 5.1% in November. So we'll see how that, uh, how that develops in, uh, in January. Uh, technical perspective with respect to the Aussie dollar. Whilst we hold resistance at 71.70, a bearish, a bearish candle print on uh, on Friday, as we potentially correct against that and hold pivot as resistance, I'm looking for an extension down to test descending trendline support to the 68.70s. We have an equality objective.
versus the swing structure here down to 68.32. This stage, we'd really need to see a close back through descending tr trend line resistance here, 72.30s on a closing basis to encourage the view that we could uh, test higher and look for a move up to uh, look for offers and stops above the 74 handle. For now, the focus seems to be on the downside and looking for this trend line test. And that concludes the weekly market outlook for week commencing the 7th of February. As always, traders, plan the trade, trade the plan, and most importantly, manage your risk. Until next time, thanks very much.